Well, happy Saturday, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, here on the last few hours of summer here. Fall officially arrives tomorrow morning at 8.44 Eastern Time here. So, again, enjoy these last few hours of summer here. Uh, hurricane season, while well, uh, it's dipped a bit here after the lull uh, that we had in August in terms of uh, uh, typical name storms, ACE index. Uh, but, again, if we look at the landfalls, we've had three hurricane landfalls here in the U.S. Uh, two is typical an entire season. And we think we're going to add at least two, maybe three more this year. So, again, this is uh, definitely you don't have to have a lot of not storms to have an uh, above average destructive year. And, again, unfortunately, we're talking about another hurricane here this week. Um, again, these areas, uh, the, the map is our kind of our year head outlook of where the threat areas were. Again, reds and orange are more significant than the yellows. But, again, uh, so Barrel, Francine, Debbie, Debbie, and tropical, uh, potential tropical cyclone number eight last week here dumped tons of rain, obviously, in North Carolina. So that... That actually may get uh, reevaluated by the Hurricane Center and may actually have gotten a name uh, when they do a postmortem here on uh, that storm. Because again, a lot of flooding and winds suggest that it could have been a tropical storm that hit um, North Carolina here this past week. Looking ahead here, Hurricane Center is monitoring four areas. The real big threat is going to be this uh, system in the Caribbean Gulf uh, with almost near 100% certainty here. Uh, models are pretty much all in agreement of a Cat 1, at least hurricane, hitting somewhere between Alabama and Florida. Uh, again, the models have been shifting a bit. Originally had been taken in more toward Texas. So, again, I think this is a, if I was Tampa, I'd be a little nervous. Uh, again, um, so, again, something to watch here for about the Friday time frame. So, uh, again, uh, Tampa's dodging bullets, bullets after bullets. I think they've had uh, only two major hurricane landfalls in their 175-plus years of history. Um, the last one for a major hurricane to hit Tampa was in 1921, 103 years ago, and before that was the uh, Great Gale Storm, uh, Cat 4, in 1848. So, again, they've dodged so many bullets here. Again, I was stationed there many, many moons ago at McDill Air Force Base, and it's just amazing how, um, you know, lucky they've been here. So we'll see. This is concerning because the models do hint that it could threaten, uh, at least some of the models threat that it could impact Tampa. And if we look at these 14-day storm tracks here, you can see a lot of moisture down there in the Caribbean. And... Uh, conditions are favorable with uh, 87 degree water temperatures and not a lot of wind shear. So again, very concerned about this system here. Again, um, these can explode very quickly with 87 degree water temperature. And then more systems coming off Africa that we got to worry about as we get into early October. So seasons coming to life uh, as expected here. Look at the last week uh, summer here ending tonight here, 21 September. Here in the U.S., 4 degrees warmer than last year. Warmest in 6, second warmest in 39. So flip-flop from the cooler week last week to a warmer week this week. 16% drier than a year ago, fourth driest in 39 years, so much below average precip. Again, don't tell folks that in uh, soggy, flooded Florida, uh, I'm sorry, North Carolina here again with that uh, potential tropical slumber, cyclone number eight again. So again, lots of rain there in North Carolina. That's on top of the rainfall from Debbie. So again, uh, again, very concerned about that area as well because you've already saturated, you can't handle another hurricane event. A little bit cooler there in Europe, uh, three degrees cooler and uh, very cold down under in Australia. Uh, colds in six years, uh, eighth colds in 39 years and very wet. Uh, and if we look at this uh, rainfall here, trends here in the U.S. have been kind of crazy. August 31st, the entire East Coast, again, we had uh, very wet, much above average for most folks, again, along the immediate East Coast. And then look at September here, just bone dry. In fact, uh, many areas in New England are actually the driest in history for the first 21 days of September here. So northeast dries in 39 plus years, north central dries in 39 plus years, southwest dries in four years. Uh, wet spots obviously down in the south, south central plains, uh, Texas area wet in six, southeast wet in three here. So this will change. We do believe October is going to be a wet month, um, particularly Gulf Coast, East Coast uh, areas. Look at this week again. All eyes are going to be on hurricane um, high risk areas again. It's really from uh, again we're going to lean Florida again, Tampa area, but. Um, you know, really anywhere from uh, New Orleans to Tampa should keep an eye on this system. Again, we'd be leaning more toward the, the Florida area for a threat. Temperatures look to be about 0.8 warmer than last year, warmest in five years, fourth warmest in 39 years, so much above average national temperatures here. Um, trends versus a year ago is that tiny map uh, inset left there, but uh, so much cooler there in the Texas South Central Plains compared to last year and versus average. The 32 degree Fahrenheit index that we track for 260 cities is down 91%, uh, non existent. Uh, so, don't have a lot of freezing temperatures where people live. Again, certainly in the Rockies, but uh, not where population centers are. 90 Fahrenheit index is uh, 255, which is down 25%, at least in three years. And rainfall up 19% wetter. What is in six, ninth, what is in 39 years? So, we'll see about uh, 
where all this moisture will go from the potential hurricane here late right now models hinting about a friday landfall so again uh, not too far away here next week again getting the first few days of october five october um, a cooler trend three degrees cooler than last year six warms in 39 years uh, again um map inset left there shows much much colder even though it's above average much much colder than last year's record hot conditions uh, for the eastern half especially there in the plains south central plains um, our 32 degree index is still down uh, at least in 39 years and our hot 90 fahrenheit index for 260 major cities is also down 74 percent at least in 14 years rainfall again up 30 uh, percent what is in three years 18th what is so in the middle of the pack um, again we've got to watch these systems here again because you've already had saturated grounds and uh, uh, the Carolinas, and again, they just can't handle another system here. So again, um, need to watch that because a uh, flooding threat uh, from any landfalling hurricane uh, will be significant for sure. The world 2A outlook, again, we aggregate these world trends here again. So um, cooling off there in Europe, again, they're going back to a cooler trend, uh, still warm across North America. See some cold weather there up in Alaska. And again, there's um, that'll spill down typically into the U.S. within a couple weeks. So again, something to watch there. Map inset left is the... Precip trends versus average, and this is the total precip and rainfall and snowfall again. Um, starting to see a lot of snow there in Alaska, the northern tier of uh, Canada, Greenland, Siberia for sure. Again, that's one bellwether of a winter outlook is if you can get a lot of snow there in Siberia early, it can potentially lead to a colder later fall uh, here in the U.S. Um, so that, folks, I hope you have a great week, and we'll be back here again this time next week. Mm -hmm.